Hey guys, welcome to the OxyFuel video lecture portion of this class. This is going to be the first of four videos where we talk about running a cutting torch. This first section is going to be pretty short, pretty sweet. We're going to go over some general guidelines and the basic information you need to know about an OxyFuel torch and a torch setup. We're going to go over each component, what each component does, and the importance that each component plays in the entire assembly of the cutting torch. That way you understand why that piece needs to be there and the role that it plays specifically. What is OxyFuel? OxyFuel is a highly popular process where we take a fuel gas and mix it with an oxidizing gas, in this case oxygen, to produce a much hotter flame than what would regularly exist. With the two gases that we're going to mix together, the flame actually can get all the way up to 6,300 degrees Fahrenheit. It only takes about 2,100 degrees for that steel to melt. So you can imagine it's going to cut through that pretty easily. Depending on how thick the metal is, but it's going to cut through it pretty easily. And we are talking about ferrous metals here, which are magnetic, mild steel, or a low alloy type of a steel. Anything that's not magnetic or non-ferrous, like aluminum or stainless, we're not going to cut them with a torch. It doesn't, it doesn't react well. What are the benefits of this process? You've got a, it's cost effective and it's got a low capital cost, which means it, it's not expensive to run the torch. Now, if you wanted to have one at home, the initial setup is usually what gets people. That's why most people don't have these at the house to work with because you have to go out and get bottles and get the torches and things like that. And it can get really expensive initially. The initial cost is high, but once you have everything, just getting your gas refilled and stuff like that, it's actually pretty low. There's no electricity requirements for the cutting torch. Don't have electricity running to it, therefore it makes it a little more mobile. You can use it in places where you couldn't otherwise if they didn't have electricity. Can be manual or mechanized. This means that we've got either handheld torches that we can cut with by hand and manually run that torch to cut whatever we want, or it could actually go on a track torch or something that's machine driven, motor driven rather, and cut in a straight line, or you can put one on a CNC router and it will cut out a specific shape or design. We don't have one of them. They're kind of high, kind of expensive. And they're good for a wide range of manageable thicknesses. You're going from like an eighth of an inch all the way up to half, three quarters of an inch if you wanted to with the cutting torches that we have. And they are transportable. If you see in this picture right here, it's on a bottle cart, which is that green thing with the wheels that you can just tip back and roll it wherever you want to. Probably not transportable down a set of stairs or down a steep hill with rocks, but every, everything else I'm pretty sure you could handle if you wanted to. The drawbacks for OxyFuel. High risk of thermal burns. This flame can get kind of crazy and it can spatter some on you. You might, you might get a little bit of a burn if you do not have the proper PPE on. If you do, everything will be fine. Like I said before, it's not suited for non-ferrous metals. So any kind of metal that is non-ferrous, you will have to find another means to cut it or alter it in other ways. We could do this with a bandsaw. We have a bandsaw in the shop. We also got grinders that you could put a cutoff wheel on. And we also have a plasma cutter in the other cutting area of the shop that handles non-ferrous metals fairly easily. Then we're kind of just a few options to throw out there. It's not optimal in inclement weather. And what I mean by this is the gas coming out of the end is shooting directional. If you have a high wind, it's going to be trying to blow your flame around. And more importantly, if it's raining. If it's raining outside, water's not going to do good on something that's on fire. So, there are the things that you have to watch out for if you were going to plan your day around running a cutting torch and then uh, a hurricane comes through or wouldn't, it's just not going to end right. I mean, you could probably just catch up when the hurricane's over with if you wanted to, or you plan a different way to cut it. This is less effective on thin metals. 
thin metals are harder to deal with with this torch because as you're making your cuts on something really thin, it tends to melt so quickly that it fuses back together. It's hard to get a good clean cut and to get to get the uh, results that you were expecting or desired. And it's limited to mainly mild and low alloy steels. Hardened steels are a little bit harder to cut, a little bit harder to deal with. You know, steels that have molybdenum or something like that added to them, them are going to be a little more difficult to deal with with a cutting torch, with oxy fuel anyway, acetylene. What to expect from this course? We're going to learn how to assemble, disassemble, the manual and the mechanized versions of this torch. We need to know how to do both of these because this is something that you're going to do the entire duration of your stay here at this class. You'd be surprised at how many people somehow skate by without learning how to do this. This is the most important thing you're going to do because this affects your work pieces. It affects how quickly you can get one turned in and get to the next one. How to safely operate the OxyFuel torch with an expected level of accuracy. And what we mean by this is, is you can sit through the class and learn how to put the torch together. But if you don't know how to set the gauges right and you don't know how to manually cut it to get a decent enough cut, then we're kind of wasting our time. So the point is, is for us to show you how to not only put the torch together, but to actually be able to run it somewhat decent. To where if you went to a job and they said, hey, can you run a cutting torch? You can say, yeah, and not embarrass yourself. That's basically what I'm getting at. Distinguish between multiple types of gases. This is important because we have different compressed gases that are going to be down on the other end of the awning that are in the same size and shape bottles. They're going to be labeled with tags and they're going to be color coded. And you're going to have to know how to read them color codes and them tags to know which gas it is that you're going to have to grab to put on this torch. Because there are other gases that could go right in its place and then it's just not going to work right. And troubleshoot operational issues and resolve the problems with a fair amount of ease. If you get to the cutting torch, somebody else has done tampered with it, they done changed the settings, turned some stuff off, it would be expected that you could flip through some of the stuff that we showed you, a little bit of the pointers and troubleshooting um, techniques to figure out yourself what is wrong with that torch because there's not going to always be somebody there to show you what is wrong with that torch. And even if it has to be where you back everything all the way off and then put it back in the order we taught you, even if that has to be the case, as long as you get it back to running the way that you need it to run in order to cut with, then you're going to be in good shape. That's pretty much all we mean by troubleshoot. Figure out what's wrong with it. Make it run right. Like I said, that's going to be a pretty quick section. We are already done with the first section of the oxy fuel portion. We will catch you on the next one.